8 hours 8 minutes. That's quite a long time, so I must be quite close to the end of the game, to be honest. After witnessing Ramon's abduction before their very eyes, Luke and Professor Layton are shocked to see him return to Reynold Manor on his own. <laughs> Busy with the murder investigation, Inspector Chalmy warns Layton against meddling any further. However, Layton is confident that the Golden Apple and the morning's murder are linked to one another. Why? Why does he think they're linked? It's nothing of the sort. What were you about to say? Uh. So where do we go then? Just... Wander around again? Chocolate code. What was she trying to tell you? What? But what's this? Just a blank letter. Hello, the four fox. There's two words. So they want two words. It's not numbers, is it? It's letters, okay. <sighs> what could the message be? One word of four letters, one word of two letters. Something me? Love me? How would you even get there, though? Hang on, what is this? Gadget loving. Technophile. So what's this? It's um, a game with lots of puzzles. <laughs> I've already spent something like eight hours. There might only be a couple of hours left in the game, I think. So, I'm trying to solve this one now.
I have no idea. <laughs> How to get started here. Is it substitution? So... I mean, I can't even think of a message it would be. Love me. But I don't see how that would connect. Or... Something me. Or what could the second word be? Is it just an anagram? It's not enough vowels. I have no idea. Why is gadget loving technophile girlfriend? Why why is that relevant? Because it uses a, a gadget. So can you displace the letters by some number? So I mean, I can't think of many words the second word could be that have two letters in them. My. No. It. Should I take a hint then? So what's the puzzle exactly? Just what you see right there. <laughs> the description's there on the left, that's all I have. And it seems they want you to enter two words. 
So there's two words from that. Right, you know what, I'm suspicious now because there's a bite here, there's a bite here, there's a bite here, and there's a bite here, and there's a bite here. What does that mean? What do those bites mean? It just seems, or well, maybe it's just just part of the artwork, but it seems suspicious that you got one up here, one here, one here, one here, one here. No idea. I have no idea how to even get started. There's infinite number of different ways it could be decoded. If it's something really boring, like you have to add a number to each letter to get another letter. But even if you do that, I can't think what word it could be. Us? My? No? Two? Like what the second word could be. Us? N O P Q R S T U. Is it rot thirteen? Let's try rot thirteen. It's kind of obscure, but G E C Y N W. Nope, it's not rot thirteen. Is it rot 1? Rot 2? You know what, I'm just going to try all the rots. Rot 3. Rot 4. 5. Alright, I've confirmed. It's not a shift. It's not a, a shift. Caesar shift of any sort. So... What? Okay, I'm taking a hint. It's rather surprising that your girlfriend would leave you a message via chocolate. It's usually more her style to contact you via digital means. What? I don't know. Digital means. Phone? Email? Oh! No. What? I mean, I'm thinking like a, a number pad on a phone. You got A, B, C is 1, D, E, F is 2, and so on. But that would just get you numbers. I'm taking another hint then. 
On more than one occasion, she has suffered from the uniquely modern condition of texting thumb. Oh, God. But... Texting thumb. So she... When she presses the... The numbers... To write a letter, she presses it too many times. <sighs> Where's my phone? Let me get my phone. I'm gonna have to use a phone for this. doesn't tell me anything. Texting thumb. G E C Y G four three two nine. What does that mean? Texting thumb. What's texting thumb? She presses the number the wrong number of times. So when she tries to do G, she accidentally does H or I. Start with N, so it could be M. So it could be my. And then... I don't get it. Look at your closest keyboard for a hint. Oh, I thought they were talking about a phone, not a keyboard. Who texts, who texts with a keyboard? Oh, text as in what, like messenger, like email. Okay, whatever. Uh... G E C Y So it's the it's the it's the letter that's to the right of it. So it's M E and the first word is H no oh. I think this G-E-C-Y What? G-E-C-Y-N-W Texting thumb. I, what? 
What am I supposed to see on my keyboard? G. So instead of pressing G, she presses F or H or T or B? Which one of those? Uh, I've used all the hints. I can't... There's no more hints. Is this going to be the whole stream? Just me staring at this puzzle? N, W. What's special about N and W? B, Q, M, E. M, E. M. I've got an M and I've got an E. Okay, and G, E, C, Y. Texting thumb. What's texting thumb? Uniquely modern condition of texting thumb. Like you swap the rows, but they're not lined. They're not aligned, so you can't. I can't. I can't. I can't think what to do with that. Okay, he doesn't have anything to say. Where else can we go? All these shops are empty. Okay, hopefully this puzzle is not as ridiculous. Sausage thief. <laughs> Somebody ate the butcher's sausages. Here's what these four boys have to say. Were they cooked? Only one of these rascals is telling the truth. So A says B ate the sausages. If he was telling the truth... then the others would be liars. But then that would make D tell the truth. Ah. So if B is a liar, D can't be telling the truth. So either it's B is the truth teller or D is the truth teller. If 
B is the truth teller. Then D ate them. So A lies. B tells the truth. C... tells the truth. So it's not that. So it must be D telling the truth. D is telling the truth. That means B is lying. So D didn't eat them. A is lying. So B didn't eat them. C is lying. So C did eat them. So it's D. But no, C ate them. Hmm. There's something on the floor there. Oh, he's gonna get kidnapped too. Boss complimented my latest model today. He's a good guy, and he's given me a new sense of purpose. I'm sure this is my true calling. Number 69. Chocolatey puzzle. Chocolate puzzle. You have a hankering for chocolate, so you buy a huge sheet of 30 chocolate squares. The sheet is 5 squares long by 6 squares wide. You can only break the chocolate at the lines that run between squares. And you aren't allowed to stack multiple segments on top of each other. Keeping those rules in mind, what is the fewest number of times you need to break the chocolate in order to separate each of the 30 squares? Well, that's easy. 29. Because you start with one piece, and then when you make a break, you end up with two pieces. Then when you make another break, you end up with three pieces regardless of where you make the break, and so on. And you want to end up with 30 pieces. So you make 29 breaks. Luke, here's my answer. Critical thinking is the key to success. Okay. Crouton's restaurant. No.
Okay, her puzzle, I don't know what that's about. Another chess puzzle. Too many queens, too. Oh, not the. F oh, it's five by five. Okay. Uh. Start by putting him, putting it there. Wait, is that it? This is the first setup I tried. That should do it. I just got lucky. Another puzzle solved. Well, that was easier than the four by four. <laughs> nah, it was harder, but I just got lucky. Oranges are currently in the apple warehouse and vice versa. Can you correct the mistake and put all the fruit in its proper place? What? There isn't really much of a puzzle to this, you just gotta do it. Unless it gets harder. Once you start putting stuff in. There's not much of a puzzle to this, you just have to do it. Sixty-eight turns, Here's sixty-nine turns. Critical thinking is the key to success. There was no critical thinking. <laughs> Okay, let's ask the innkeeper, or this guy here. Helpful.
Still want to go back to the mana? Wood cutouts. Your job is to cut the wood along the dotted line so they end up with four identical pieces. The pieces may face different directions, but they must not be mirrored versions of each other. Mirrored. Huh? Okay. So I can't do that, for example, because they're mirrored. So each piece must have eight pieces in it. So how about this? No. They must not be mirrored versions of each other. These are mirrored. Damn it. How can they not be mirrored? Must not be what they I don't see how you could do do that. It's always gonna be mirrored, isn't it? Well
So... The shape must be really weird, because if you... If we need four identical pieces... Then either they look the same? No, because that would be mirrored. No, not technically. Oh. Okay, it's, for example, these two would be mirrored. But... Like that, and... Well, these, this doesn't really work, but... That piece and this piece would not be mirrored, but that's loud, but it... Oh dear. How on earth can you do this? This is what I was trying to do before. And then we can't make... Puzzles are getting hard. So, maybe we can rule out some lines. So, can we have a line here? Ever. If we do, we can never have a line here, for sure because that leaves this impossible. But this line has to connect somewhere, so it, it can either go this way, or this way. If it go this way, what happens? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
then this kind of has to have these two pieces. But then that already leaves us in another possible situation. If it goes this way... I mean, it seems obvious to do something like this, and clearly that and that doesn't work because they're mirrored. So what can I do to fix it? That doesn't work. The other thing I did was this. Those are identical. How do I make sure they're not mirrored? Oh, hang on. When they say you end up with four identical pieces, it doesn't mean they have to sum to the whole thing. So... You could make a shape... with fewer than eight pieces. Like that. Not mirrored versions of each other. So are those mirrored versions of each other? Yeah, they are. Uh... But this is really obscure. How would it know that you've done this right? And those are mirrored. Can we make a shape? Is it? I think they do mean the whole 
And the four pieces have to be sum up to the whole. Alright, I don't know. Hint, please. This puzzle would be a lot easier if you were allowed to use mirror versions of the shape as well. Since you can't though, here's a hint to get you started on the right track. Don't start off by dividing the wood two pieces straight through the middle. Well, I wasn't doing that. I mean, I was not... I don't know. Uh, another hint. Standard office staple. Well, that's the shape you're looking to cut out here. Except it'll be a bit longer in the middle than your standard staple. Right. I mean, this is what I did earlier, but this doesn't this doesn't work, does it? Those two are mirrored. Board is shaped like a large H. First, cut a staple shaped piece out of both of the vertical lines that make up the sides of the H. Then draw a line through the middle of the horizontal line that remains to separate the last two pieces. What? This is what I did, but that's a mirror. That's. That's a mirrored version. That? Should do it. Another puzzle solved. But But those two are mirrors of each other, and so are those two. I'm trying to understand that one. What was the name of that puzzle? I need to Google this. Alright, let's Google this one. find any discussions of this puzzle. Oh, this is gonna bother me now. Alright, here we are. Game facts.
I think it's just... I think they just... made the puzzle wrong. Well, they shouldn't have used the phrase... mirrored versions. Because the solution is definitely mirrored versions. That's, that's literally the meaning. You put a mirror between one piece and you get the other piece. Alright, I'm not happy with that one. <laughs> like, what's stopping me from... Okay, this... What's stopping me from doing this? Should do it. But that's just as much a mirror. Oh, how embarrassing. But that's equally a mirror. Oh, it's so stupid. You put a mirror between them and you'd see the same piece. That's what it means, doesn't it? Where am I supposed to go now? Where do I go? I've asked around town already. I've spoken to everyone. Do I need to solve? No, not this one. Trying to solve her puzzle. Maybe use the bites. So if you take a G and use the bite to go up, you get T, and it's E, then C to the left is X, then Y to the left is T, it's text, and then N to the right is me, M, and W to the right is E, text me. That's so obscure, what the heck? And how could you get it without the hints? No way, I don't believe anyone could get that.
That was ridiculous. There we go. Not having that. There's got to be an elegance to such codes. This one was just... The bites take... She didn't do anything for us, so that was optional. What's in here? I think people are going missing. Where are all the people? Oh, okay. Clearly we need those two pieces. We need those two. Probably we need those two. Is that it? There we go. Is that it? Another puzzle solved. I'm going to pick it up. What's this guy doing here? Desk. That guy looks like the kidnapper. Uh oh. Maybe not. Maybe I'm being paranoid.
X marks the spot. Hold it in front of a fireplace or something. Oh. It's one of those invisible ink puzzles. Where you iron it or you hold it up to the light or something and you see something. I don't know. Mark the ones you think will form a knot when you grab them by their ends and pull them taut. Oh man. I... I don't know. I think A will. B won't. C will. D won't. So what, what did I say? I lost track now. A will. B won't. C will. D won't. I, I, can't, I don't know. Here's my guess. I've let you down, Professor. Take a good. I did look. at Take a good look. All right. B. Definitely not. Okay, definitely not B. What about D? No, not D. Okay, C? Oh, I think A is not. Not a not. I don't know if A is. I don't know. I just want to pull it. I'm pretty sure B and D are not.
B is definitely, definitely, definitely not. No, not. D. Yeah, you can unravel that. I can see how to unravel it. So definitely not B and D. So it's either A or C or neither. So I said A and C before. So if there's one I'm confident with, let's say just that one and not the other one. A and C look similar. fully understand why it's not A, but that's the only other... I, I was quite confident with C. So. Doze and dash. Do people not pay before they check in? Oh dear. You're not going to let me search the room for clues? Which of these words doesn't make the sound of silence? What? Doesn't make the sound of silence. Rest makes the sound of silence. And the others don't really do it. I don't understand.
Ouch. I mean, rest makes the sound of silence, but they're asking for what doesn't. Note? This. I'm so embarrassed. Think carefully about the inscription again. The inscription. Show me the inscription. Note, rhythm, rest, treble, chord scale. I don't I can't make any sense of this. These puzzles are getting really obscure. More obscure than hard. When you see a group of words that have a similar theme, it's easy to get hung up by their meaning. Instead, look for other ways to interpret the question asked of you. For example, other than a very literal definition, what else could the sound of silence be referring to? Sound of silence. Sound of silence. What? Sound of silence. I don't know. I don't understand these. Read each word out loud and pay attention to how they differ from each other. In particular, think about how each word is pronounced. Silence is two syllables. I noticed that, but there's treble and rhythm with both have two syllables. Note, rhythm, rest, treble, chord, scale. I don't understand. Still stuck? Think about what letters aren't pronounced. What? Which... Which words have silent letters? Note a silent E, I guess. Rhythm Rest Treble Chord Scale Which of these words doesn't make the sound of silence? Rhythm? I don't understand this one at all. I'm not getting fed up with these overly abstract puzzles. <laughs> what is it then? Just tell me. Oh, I was sure I had it. Which of these words doesn't make the sound of silence? Is it a letter from silence? So S C
Rhythm doesn't have a letter, but we've done that one. We've tried rhythm and we tried... What did I try first? I don't even remember what I tried first. Note? I tried rhythm and note. Rhythm. Rest. Silence. Alright. I don't know. Let's try all of them. I think I've got it. Why? Why is it rest? All of the other options have silent letters. No, they don't. Treble doesn't have... Oh. Rhythm doesn't have a silent letter. Oh, it does. Okay. Scale, chord... No, no, no. I don't agree with chord. CH is a combined sound. Uh... Uh, this, that's ambiguous. Do I not have orphans puzzles? No, I don't actually. Doors open. Oh yeah, it's this guy. Laziest man on earth. However, despite his efforts, there's one place he can't reach without getting off his stuff. This legendary loaf has put everything in the room within reach. However, despite his efforts, there's one place he can't reach without getting off his stuff. His own butt. It's got an extender arm, so you can reach everything. High energy magnets. Extender arm can pick up anything from the floor here. One place he can't reach. Behind him? Energy magnets. I 
What is this? It looks like he could reach everything with his arm. The shelf behind him. This box, because you need a key for it, probably. I don't know. There we go. Well, I don't know. Frankly, All right, this I is not a good session. They're just giving me really. Bad puzzles this session. <laughs> I really have to get off his duff. What's a duff? I'm not. Is that his butt? Why would he? Why would he have to get off his duff? To feed the cat? To uh. Um. To fill the kettle. That should do it. But how does he fill the kettle then? Ashamed. Where's the water source? Usually one has to stand to reach something high up and away, but this ingenious lover has tools to do that for one. Don't go looking for the answer in high places. But low places can be reached as well. The radio, you can just use the arm for that. Friend here has no trouble moving books and opening cupboards from across the room. Where can't those tools reach? Magnet? But the fishing rod isn't made of metal. Understand. There's a place he can't reach while sitting down. Can you reach under the bottom of your feet while standing up? Can you reach under the bottom of your feet? Yes, I can. Can I do it while sitting down? Yes, I can. That I'm reaching my bottom of my feet right now. So what? What are they getting at? His feet? His slippers? But he could reach those with his extender arm. What then? Frankly, I'm ashamed. What's the duff? Can you reach under the bottom if you are standing up? Yes, I can. Standing up. Under the chair? But they... I mean, I thought of that, but... 
There's no way to signify that with this circle. Why do they give us a circle? So what, under the chair? Luke, here's my answer. What? I but is it, it his extender arm could reach? I don't know, his fishing rod could. And anyway, he didn't really give us a way to sit to Mark under the chair, because you can't put the ring around. What would you put the ring around? Oh, that was so stupid. These last few puzzles have been so dumb. I think they... They ran out of ideas at this point. <laughs> that doesn't bode well for the future games, but the future games are good. So I think in this puzzle, they just really ran out of ideas. In this game, I mean. So this guy's probably gone missing. Oh, he's still here. A number of five-sided shapes are hidden within the picture below. How many can you find? Answer when you think you found every hidden shape. Five-sided shapes. What, like a how of the pentagon with the house? One, two, three, five, so four? Are there more? One, two, three, four, five. There's four of those, there's eight. Um, so there's four that look like this, there's four that look like this, there's four that look like this, so twelve altogether so far. Well, that should do it. Another puzzle solved. Okay. The way home from the store, you armor a perfectly square block of chocolate. Only four of the 16 chocolate squares have an almond in them. Divide the chocolate evenly along the lines between the squares. Each piece is in the same shape and contains an almond in a different location. Each... so we're gonna cut it into two equally shaped pieces. Contains an almond in a different location. Oh my god. Oh, no, we're splitting into four. Okay. So 
each piece is four. Hands and arm in a different location. There's not many shapes you can make with four pieces, are there? Straight line. That's no good. Um, two by two. Yep, that's no good. Uh, an L piece. No pieces of maybe. What else can we do? Plus cross piece, junction piece, I don't know what it's called. So then you'd have to go like that, like that. No. Pretty sure we can't do across that piece. So go back to L, please. How many L's can we do containing this left one? We can do this. Well, then we don't leave. So it's not like that. If I do that, then it has to be like that, and then we're stuck. So I can't do that. I could do like this. And then we have to do this. Got one in the corner, one at the small end, one at the big end, and one. Yeah, that's it. That should do it. Another puzzle solved. Okay. Choke a donkey with those scones. deal. Mm -hmm. All right. The one who broke the window is lying. An unknown number of the other children may be lying as well. <laughs> okay. Um. <coughs> Let's suppose A is lying. <coughs> so if he's li he's lying, that means A broke the window. And B is lying. C is lying. Hang on, hang on. Go back to the start. A can't be... 
He can't be lying. Wait. Because if he's lying, that means he broke it. But we know that one who broke the window is lying. So it's not A. So, no. A is telling the truth. For sure. A is telling the truth, and he also didn't break the window. Now let's look at what C says. We know A didn't do anything, so C is telling the truth. Which means he didn't break the window either. Okay. So it's between B and D. B didn't break the glass, I swear. And B says he broke it. So, if B is telling the truth, that means he broke it. So, no, it's not B. So, B's lying. That means it must be D. It's D. Luke, here's my answer. Wait, what? Ah, I suppose I thought wrong. B and- I said B and D were lying- wait, what did I say? I said B and D are lying, but D broke it, didn't I? A and C are telling the truth. B has to be lying. Because if he broke it, he would be telling the truth. It must be D, wasn't it? I'm getting confused now. Let's get some pen and paper. So A. So what did I say? If A is telling the truth... No, it, if A was lying... That means he broke it. And that's a contradiction, because we know whoever broke it is lying. No! Hang on. I've got- I, that was my first assumption, I, it went wrong from there. Okay, so A, what did I say? If A is telling the truth, then he didn't break it. If he's lying, that means he did break it. So there's nothing wrong with what A is saying. We can't conclude anything about A. Let's go to B. B. If he's telling the truth, that means he broke it. But then that contradicts that he's telling the truth. So he can't be telling the truth, so he's a liar, for sure, and that means he did not break it. Alright, now look, let's look at D. He's saying D didn't break the glass, so he's telling the truth. It also means D did, D did not break the glass. Now let's look at C and A. If A broke the glass, and he's lying about him, himself not breaking the glass, would that be consistent with what with C? Don't be mad at A, he didn't do anything. C would be telling the truth. No, C would be lying as well. So it could be A. Could So it could be A, and that works. So that's probably the answer. Could it be C, though? If it was C, he'd be telling the truth. Yeah, so it's A. Ugh. There we go. Another puzzle solved.
It's deeper than we thought, Luke. You need to paint the cubes so that all faces that touch are different colours. Using three colours of paint, how many ways can you paint the cubes so that it satisfies the above condition? What? Each painting scheme should be a different pattern, not just the same pattern with the colours rearranged. What? Different... How do you define... Okay. So let's just paint the top side red, for sure. Because we're ignoring rotation of the colors. So what can we do here? We could... Paint the front either green or blue. Let's say we paint it green. Then that means we've got to have blue on the right. Sorry, so... so I'm s it's not clear what I'm referring to. I'm saying red here. We put green here. Blue. So then that would have to be blue. That would back the back would have to be green. And the bottom would have to be red. So that's one pattern. Alternatively, if I had gone for blue here, then it's the same but reverse. So that'd have to be green. That'd be green. That'd be blue. And that'd be red. So that's two. That's it. It's decided the moment I choose red and green. Yeah, it's two. Well, here's my guess. Come on, you're getting them all wrong today. All rotated or color swapped versions of a particular painting scene count as the same pattern. Don't count them as separate patterns when tallying up the total number of possible solutions. So I said color the top side red, because if I then do the same for green and blue, those are just the same pattern, but with colors rearranged. So red, the top one is red. Now that means the sides, the four sides, the four vertical sides can only be green or blue. Now, they can't all be green. Because they would touch. So that means there must be at least one green and at least one blue. Now, the bottom side is touching at least one green and one blue, so it must be red. So I've proven that we have red on top and red on the bottom. Okay. And if we put a blue here, then a green goes here, blue goes there, green goes there. And if a... Oh, it's one. It all reduces to one. Because blue and green swapped is a swapping. Damn it.
Oh. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. You've scattered a deck of 52 cards and one joker face down on a table so that you don't know which card is where. You start turning the cards over one by one. Assuming that you can't flip the same card twice, what are the percentage odds that you would turn over all four aces before you turn over the joker? What? Percentage odds that you'll turn all four aces before you turn over the joker. I mean, they can't be expecting us to calculate this mathematically. That's a bit advanced. So there's a trick here. Don't know which card is where. Assuming that you can't flip the same card twice, what well, the they turn over all four aces between, before you turn over the joker? I think they're really asking for just solve solve it. Okay, what's the probability? Uh percentage. It's not gonna be a nice number, is it? Even if we calculate it, it's going to be a fractional number, so no, there's got to be a trick. Don't know which card is where. Don't know which card is where, but you could put the aces somewhere and all the others. No, I don't think that's. Like, it's not going to be something like 1 in 52, no, because... I don't understand this one. What would be the actual mathematical probabilities? There's a trick to this, obviously, but if, if it, the actual mathematical probability would be... You'd have to count up how many places you could put the joker and how many you, ways you could arrange the four aces in front of him. I, what? You 
You can't flip the same card twice. Are you allowed to flip them four times? Oh my god. This is stupid. No. No, 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 no. What was I thinking? Can't flip the same card twice. Why would you want to? Turn over all the four aces before you turn over the choker. Well, they've covered the tricks I was thinking of. All right, I don't know. Hint. Out of 53 cards, four are aces. Each time you flip a card, the probability of turning over an ace increases. But you really don't need to work out any of that. Think about what you can do to eliminate other variables to consider. What? But it didn't say we're trying to maximize the odds or minimize the odds. It just says what will be the odds if we're picking randomly. Or it's not clear what our goal is. Maybe this is really a probability problem. It's like that plane puzzle where everyone's sitting down in the seats. Uh, let's think. So, oh, I see. I see what they're getting at. This is clever, actually. There's four aces, and there's one joker, and there's a bunch of other cards. But the other cards don't matter, because they don't affect anything. Oh my god. So stupid. This is a real probability problem. I should have got this. The other cards don't affect anything. Every time you pick up a card which is neither an ace nor a joker, then um, nothing changes. So discard them all. So you're left with literally just four aces and one joker. So now, the odds that you pick up all four aces before you turn over the joker is one in five. Because it's one in five chance of being it being lost. Oh, that's a good one. It is the same as the plane puzzle that I was referring to. The one where everyone's picking their seat at random. Can't remember that puzzle. So it's 20%? Oh my god. They caught me out. I'm usually good at these probability puzzles because I've... No! There we go. Fuck! I had it. Oh. How Stupid it? input system. Has an answer. That's good. you be? Well, I'd rather not say. Huh? Why not? What are you hiding? <laughs> what are you hiding? We seek access to the tower. Oh. Do you think you could help us, miss? Mm, the tower? Hmm. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, wait!
in the world was that about? Wait, is she the... Okay, can we not go to the park? I, I just heard- I just saw him- oh man. What? We finished chapter 6 already? Ten hour fourteen. Plonker, Rodney. What did I say? What did I say? Every game has a sewer level. Every single game has a sewer level. And you could always walk in the sewers, unlike in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was to the left. Is he just mixing languages together? How many times larger is the area of the blue square compared to that of the red square? Huh? Oh god. So the diameter of the red square is the diameter of the circle that sorry diameter the diagonal of the square red square 
I mean, it looks like it's the answer is four or something. The diagonal of the small square is the diameter of the circle. The which incidentally is this edge here. Um, which is, <laughs> if you multiply that by root 2, you get this diagonal here, which is the diameter of the circle, which is that line there. Multiply by root 2 again, and you get this diagonal. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Now, surely there must be a way of doing that which doesn't involve Pythagoras. It's two, but the answer is two, though. Doesn't look like two, does it? Did I do something wrong? Oh, no, 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 I was doing the length. So if the length is two times, then the area is four times. Okay. They're going to show us some far simpler way of doing that. There we go. Critical thinking is the key to success. If you rotate the middle square 45 degrees, the answer becomes apparent. The middle square has half the area of the large blue square. Why? Oh, I see, yeah. Well... Yeah, okay, I see. That's confusing, though. Wait, I can... <laughs> I can see why it's half that square, and then... Okay, fine. I did it using Pythagoras, which also gave me the answer. So the reason the park's been closed all this time is because he was down in the sewers trying to solve that puzzle. Hello, Ku. Oh, I've had some really annoying puzzles this session. What's the victory condition for this game? I doubt it. No, most of these puzzles are optional. Just to end the story, I assume. In preparation for your big move, pack your belongings into 20 boxes and arrange them as shown below. With everything packed, you are now ready to label each box with its contents. In order to do so, though, you'll need to move a few boxes around. How many of the boxes can't be labeled without rearranging the stacks? I don't know what's behind. Okay, fine. One, two, three... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's no boxes in that final column. Okay. 
So... But... We can label on any side, I assume, not just on the top. So it's... Um... So there's one here. Two, three. Is that it? Just three? I think it's three then. Assume you can't label from the bottom. Yeah. Because that would count as moving boxes, technically. That should do it. Every puzzle has an answer. Oh wait, go that way. My car is a puzzle. You and your girlfriend went on a road trip over the weekend. On the way to your destination, you drove 180 miles and your girlfriend drove the rest of the way. Coming home on the exact same roads, your girlfriend drove the first 150 miles and then you got behind the wheel for the last leg of the journey. So what is the difference in miles between the... Distance you drove and the distance your girlfriend drove? Huh? Um... Oh, the total... Oh, I see, okay. I mean... Well, I was thinking that's 30 is definitely one valid value, isn't it? If 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 this here is 30, that would add up to 180 and she's zero. Uh, hang on. What would that mean? Wait, if that was 30, and that was zero, then the difference would be um, 60. But that's a valid set of values, isn't it? So the answer, I guess, is just 60. So why does it never change? I guess just as you increase this, you decrease this by the same amount linearly. So yeah, it's 60. You drove 210 and she drove 150. Yeah, in that exa in in that set of values, but I assume you can just adjust it. How does this sound? <laughs> Professor, I've solved it. Your girlfriend drove a total of one way minus 30 miles. You drove a total of one way plus 30 miles. Therefore you drove 60 more miles. Okay. Mm. 
Well, why didn't he say, well, here's my answer. I guess they just <laughs> use different phrases each time. Fossil. So I just come here for that puzzle. Okay. Uh, because that's, uh, there's this kind of meta puzzle. Uh, you have to figure out who wants what. But, so it seems Leighton and Luke like certain items more, but some items go well together. For example, book and bookcase. There's no point doing this until I have all the items, though, because it seems to reset. Well, I, I was laying them all out, and I gone back there and just put shifted them all back to the top again, so... It's like another puzzle for you to solve, once you have all the pieces. Can you arbitrarily shuffle items after you give them to one another? Yeah, you can move them around, physically. It's just when you leave the puzzle and come back to it, apparently it shifts back to the first few rows. Yeah, yeah you can swap. you can swap things, and they say whether they're more happy now, or less happy. But they also give clues, like, oh, this bookcase is missing something, or this vase has no use on its own. I'll show you the puzzle I got really stuck on. I don't know, if you had a computer you could make a screenshot of it or something. Which one was it? No. No. Uh, something to do with chocolate and Valentine's Day or something. How many chocolate puzzles are there? This one. Well, you can have a look at it while I go to the toilet anyway, but, um... I don't know. I got really, really stuck on this one. And I used all three hints and was still stuck on it for a long time with all three hints. Alright, have you, like, taken a screenshot of it or something? That's assuming you actually want to try it. I'll carry on. Uh, 
I did solve it eventually, though. With the three hints. Okay. Map. Got bin. Oh, we can go this way. The older she gets, the more young Miss is catching onto the villager's secret. She seems lonely, which is probably why the boss asked me to build an, an amusement park for her. Yep, it certainly looks like I've got my work cut out for me. I just wasn't ready to handle the boss's death. Poor young Miss, she's all alone in the world now. But no matter what happens, I have to keep going and take care of her in the boss's place. Mm -hmm. Tennis ball. Yeah, this is the one Slinky spoiled for me, so I don't even know if I would solve it. <laughs> um, he said, don't use urine. Use water. So, I know the answer is to just pour water down. Thing is, would water even work? It looks like that tennis ball is gonna get stuck there, but whatever. Slinky. <laughs> Slinky, you could have phrased it like, I don't know, differently. I don't even know, you know how to write. Any. Well, yeah, that was the that was the joke that Snakey was making. He said he tried urine and it didn't work. Another puzzle solved. <laughs> Violin. Probably let. Hmm. They could eat. Maybe Luke would like it. Um. Wait. Let me check over here again. Starting to need these hints now. 
Well, I've still got like 45 of them though, so... Oh, there is... Chocolate bar puzzle has something to do with rotating the letters. I see she bit chunks out of the bar, different sides of each letter. Yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, there is one that was really stupid and I still don't agree with the solution. Wood cutouts. It's not that interesting a puzzle, so I'll just tell you what <laughs> the answer is, really. So, it's asking you to cut this into four pieces so that the four pieces are identical. But they must not be mirrored versions of each other. So you can't do this. Because, for example, these two would be mirrored versions of each other. Okay, fair enough. So, I mean, I didn't try that, that, but apparently the solution is this. And I looked, thought of this solution, but then I realized these are clearly mirrors of each other, and so are these two. Not only are they the mirrored, but like they are right on the axis. That's as mirrored as you can get. So... But this is the solution, they say, and I don't understand at all, unless... Are they not mirrored? Why not? Because you rotate them all to be the same. You... But they are mirrored, though. Well, it doesn't say anything about allowing you to do anything. It just says they must not be mirrored versions of each other. That's what's throwing me off. But... I mean, what you said there, wouldn't that hold equally for this? Because this one can be rotated to that one. These two are mirrored. Because here you can never rotate the bottom left and bottom right shapes to be the same. You'd have to flip one of them over. But why... Well, I don't understand. Why are you picking bottom left and bottom right specifically? So the bottom left and the bottom right are mirrors of each other. Mirrored versions of each other. Rotation is never mentioned anywhere in this puzzle. But the top right and bottom left are in the same... are the same piece. Well, they're all the same piece. That's... Oh, I see the difference now. Okay, fine, yeah. I see... Okay, yeah, yeah. Actually, I probably did think of... Uh, that is probably... Okay, now that I think about it, that's probably the reason why I eliminated this one anyway, from the start. But yeah, then when I came up with this one, I guess I was just thrown off completely by the fact that they are clearly mirrored. <laughs> but then I still don't understand what they were trying to understand what they were trying to say then.
why they even included that last bit about mirrored. I'm not sure what they meant to say instead. Four, so they, okay, they, what they meant to say was four pieces that are all rotations of each other. And just don't mention anything about mirror. <laughs> just... No, 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 you don't want to say anything about flipping. You don't want to mention flipping. Because that's where the problem leads to. You just want to say, your job is to cut the wood along the dotted line so that you end up with four identical pieces that are rotations of each other. That's it. If you mention anything about flipping, that's where the problem lies. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Okay, fine. No, no, but if you say our rotations of each other... Surely that's... I, I, I mean, you could you could make it clear just by, okay, I don't know, saying the pieces have to stay on the board, board or something. They'd be rotations of each other if you flip two of them over. Or if you mean rotations in 3D... I guess. Okay, well. Well... Did I even get sold that one? I must have tried that in the end. Because the hints didn't... really tell me what the, what the solution was. Oh, no. Yeah, the final hint did actually just uh, pretty much say make your piece in a long staple shape. That's how I solved it. That's how I got it in the end. gonna ride it? Is there gonna be a puzzle when we look at the village from above? But this is what the villain wants us to do. Have you heard the wonderful puzzle about the ferris wheel? There are ten two-seater cars attached to the Ferris Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel turns so that one car rotates through the exit platform every ten every minute. What's the maximum number of people that could have taken a ride on the wheel in that time period? What? Ten in the morning and shut down thirty minutes later. So... So... After nine minutes, this guy would go all the way around and end up there. Okay, each, but each next minute, basically you get one more person entering, don't you? And they're te technically taking a ride. Every minute someone enters the ferris wheel. 
doesn't matter what happens on the rotations. So it's either 29 or 30, depending on what they mean when... Okay. So after 29 minutes... Uh, 28 people have had a ride. And one more person has entered, but he hasn't really had a ride. It's just stationary. After one more minute, those guys have had a ride, so 30. Wait, no, what did I say? Hang on. So I said after 29 minutes, 29 people have had a ride. If we're saying taken a ride means you've moved some amount. But I'm not really including people who just got on as taken a ride. So after 29 minutes, and then after one more minute, one more person takes a, has taken a ride. Okay, so 30 minutes, but then I, I don't think the person who gets on after that would count. Do you have to go? Need to go all the way around? Ugh. Probably. So then you okay? So basically, thirty people have thirty-one people have ever sat in the wheel. How many of them didn't complete a ride? Wait. Shut down thirty minutes later. Ah, oh, so that means it wasn't adding people before it shut down. So... So... Um, so if we count how many people... So if, if they were still adding people, how many people would be stuck on the Ferris wheel? So just subtract that. So... People on there would finish. I, no, I assume they just don't add any more people when they know that those people would get stuck. <laughs> so when is it? At, at, I don't know, like 20 minutes? Wait, so... When would it be? Sixty people. Wait, how do you get? S oh, two seater. Okay, I forgot. It's two per car. Well, if I just treat it as, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's a bit ambiguous. There's a couple of things which could mean different things here. Alright, fine. So let's go back to what I was saying before. Imagine it's one person per car. So after... what did I say? After... 30 minutes... We've had... 30 people enter the Ferris wheel. Ever. But at that point in time, at when 30 minutes hits, um, we have all 10 of them filled up with people. So that means 20 completed a ride. And 10, we can assume, well, maybe they shouldn't have added them in the first place. Now multiply that, that by 2 because it's 2-seater, so 40. Forty, sorry, forty-two. Because yeah, one person entered as time zero. So, yeah, maybe forty-two. Uh, let's go with that. Well, here's my game. 
Yes. Professor, I've solved it. For the last nine minutes of operation, needless to say, no one will be allowed to board the cars. Okay. Puzzle. I'm not sure where I'm, what I'm supposed to, where I'm supposed to be going in this part. Nine squares are carved into a piece of wood. Arrange nine unique numbers between one and fifty-one. Is there any three number? Oh, it's a magic square. Find the number that occupies the center square when you arrange the numbers to yield the highest. Find the number that occupies the center square when you arrange the numbers to yield the highest possible total. What? But the total is the same always, isn't it? What total? Um, okay, so... Can we put stuff in here? Oh, we can write in here. Uh... So you want to, so in a magic square, they always add up to 15, don't they? And don't you, so that five should always be in the center, shouldn't it? Can you actually even, I think you arrange the numbers 43 through 51. So the middle one is 47. Wait, what? Oh, I've been reading this wrong. Okay. Okay, fine. Nine unique numbers between 1 and 51, so that any three numbers have the same sum when added vertically horizontal. Oh, okay, I get it now. So you're trying to make the... the but by total, they mean one, one row's worth. Magic square, we just add 42 to each cell. Okay. So. Um, but what goes in the center in a normal magic square, though? Is it always five? Okay, so what? F oh, 47, okay, because, okay. It took me so many readings of that to finally understand it, right? So it's a regular magic square, but you're adding something to nine to get to 51, so you'd add 
42 to every number, and that's the best you can do, okay? And so you add 42 to 5, you get 47. Okay, got it. <laughs> that was not a 4. Uh, yeah, it's been doing that. I don't know. Sometimes there's a CPU spike with the emulator. I think I've got it. What did I write? I'm 47? So Largest total when added vertically, horizontally, and diagonally. Um, so what does what does a magic square normally look like? You just do like well, it's gonna have to be uh, eight and two uh, evens in the corners, odds on the sides. Okay. Keeps doing that. Two, eight. No, no, no. Damn it. Oh. One, five, nine, three, seven. Mm, probably not two. Probably want two here. And eight. And six. Or no. Hang on. Oh, I can't erase numbers. Eight one six three five seven. So that's a magic square. Okay, I don't I don't, but I don't know why how this helps us. <laughs> now, um One and fifty one. Why why did they choose one and fifty one? This is really strange. Do better. So
I mean, unless they... They don't mean strictly between 1 and 51, do they? No, probably not. <sighs> yeah, no, I mean, if, if we use the 9 highest numbers amongst 1 to 51, then... Guess I'll look at the hint then. We might want to try the bigger numbers first. Okay, that's. What do we mean by first? No, I think they're just saying bigger is better. Okay. Uh. Okay, well, we already kind of realized that. Just let's see what else they have to say then. You should place large numbers in your square. Use the numbers 43 through 51 when formulating your answer. Yeah, so we did. Center number is used in every single tabulation. Since you're trying to get the largest sums possible, doesn't it make sense to put the largest number right in the middle? Does it? But working backwards from this, if we did this, would that also collapse down to 9 being in the center for a regular magic square? Or is, is there something different about this that I'm not seeing? They're not including these, but they didn't actually say they weren't. Are they not including these or these sums? Only these. But it says any through. No, I mean the sides. It's only the ones that cross through the middle, according to this diagram. But they specifically say <laughs> any three numbers have the same sum when added vertically, which doesn't say anything about excluding like the top row or the left row, I think. But it's, I mean, from the diagram, it seems that this is what they mean. They actually always have to include the center. So, if it were 9, uh, um, what would you do? 
like... I don't know, one and eight. Two and... Oh, it doesn't actually matter, does it? Because like, because you're not actually... Okay, so you can just... Put them anywhere you want, as long as they're opposite each other. Alright, anyway, they're gonna show us a completed magic square, I assume. Why did they choose 51? It just makes things more confusing. Why 51? <laughs> okay, so yeah, apparently the diagram is implying that you need to use only everything has to pass through the center. Okay, that was bad, badly worded. What am I supposed to be looking at around here? Looking on everything. I had to come back here? What? Seems like an overly complex attempt to kill Professor Layton. I must be nearing the end of this game. I've been on it for like 11, 12 hours now. And I've been solving every puzzle. So I guess I've been taking longer than what would be normal, maybe, I don't know. Path you on forks to the left and right in front of the sign seen below. Find an arrow within the picture. 
like the yellow one on the side of the board. When you find it, draw a line around it and neat, as neatly as possible. Keep in mind that the arrow that you're searching for may not be the same size as the one pictured below. Uh. If <coughs> Maybe I just gotta find that, um, angle. Work from there. Don't know. Don't see it. like that. No. It's close though. Maybe my mistake is looking for the angle first. The rectangle section of it, there's not many options for a rectangle here, actually. So let's look for the rectangle.
Oh, these are so boring, these hidden object puzzles. There's no trick to it, is there? No. I think it's just a case of finding the arrow. Let's just look at pairs of parallel lines. How many could there be? So the vertical one, there's like these two. Nope. And if, if I choose to, then there would have to be a point. So like, so if I choose these two, then there would have to be a central point. No. Okay, so it's not vertical lines. So the only other possibility, all the diagonal ones are all, all over the place. So it's, if it's horizontal lines, could it be Starting with this, 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 and this, no, this and this, no, this and this, well that's too big now, that's not gonna happen, how about this and this, no, this and this, No. This and this. No. And this and this will be too big. This and this. God damn it, there it is. Now, are they going to recognize my line? Here's my answer. Critical thinking is the key to success. Oh dear. Is that really critical thinking? That was so boring. <laughs> We need to solve that arrow to know to turn a left, okay? Don't tell me there's going to be one of these at each junction. Get the ball out. Urine. Okay. Yeah.
Luke, here's my answer. Critical thinking is the key to success. Why not try to complete the puzzle in the minimum number of moves possible? No, thank you. But once you know the solution, it's probably not hard to do. Coins hidden in the walls. We need all these coins. Yes, the key to the tower. Come on, just teleport me there. Uh, probably not too hard, so circles go at the, um, these corners, so that's the case for B and C. Okay, so it's between B and C. B. Square X circle Circle Square X Yeah yeah B it's B That should do it Another puzzle solved There's another puzzle? What? Okay, whatever, let's leave. So we have to check the uh, the guy's room. Eleven hours, eleven and a half hours.
It's the Ramon. So we're going to the manor, right then. We've solved 99 puzzles. Okay, we won't interfere, let's go home. Oh, it's this one. This is the standard one. No! I clicked the sheep. Come on. Easy. Here's my answer. Every puzzle has an answer. I look like such a douche. <laughs> yeah, the boat guy. <laughs> Is this the the end of the Agatha Christie novel where the inspector sits everyone down and gives us the speech? Why? I want to hear the evidence. Oh! The market seller put our fingerprints on the vase. Because he handed it to us. And then we were like, why are you giving this to us? And he's like, oh, okay. And took it back. <laughs> Other people's fingerprints were on it as well. I guess he, they rubbed the other ones off. Why did he break it? He's just lost his evidence now. Where were you when Simon was killed? Where was I? Yeah. No, Inspector, it has quite a bit to do with you. Meaning? Isn't it obvious? If there is any criminal element involved in this case, then it is you, sir. What? <laughs> That's absurd. Hey, calm down! Huh? Uh, what utter rubbish! 
You'll need more than some death charge to save your hide. But you take very good care of your wife, Amy. So getting out here. The um what was it? It was the <coughs> potato fritters. You raged at poor Matthew when he brought you sweets with tea. Why? What's he getting? Oh, is he saying this is not the inspector? Who said Amy? I said Amy. Oh, I was tricking him. Yes. Yes, that's that's why I was saying this is mousetrap. <laughs> when did the drawbridge shut down? During our search for Claudia. Yeah, that's quite odd. <laughs> Why did he even bother getting our fingerprints on the vase if he's just going to chuck it at a wall? It's oddly silent. Why is there no music at this point? So did he actually kill Simon? on Paolo. He just jumped out the window. Okay. His grasp of the hard sciences was rumored to be unrivaled. So we've solved one of ten mysteries. How much longer is this game going to be? I guess I'll have to leave it there then. I thought I would finish the stream. 
finish the game this stream. Let's see if we've got any more puzzles here first. There are 120 puzzles in the main game. Oh, so I've solved like a hundred or something. Uh oh, she's not well. When they're not well, the next day they go dis they dis disappear. sold a hundred puzzles. It's twenty more. Alright. Before I end the stream, I will just check the witch's room. We haven't missed any puzzles so far. <sighs> okay then. Do we have enough of, of any of these things? Oh, we just need one more piece for the painting, okay. Gizmos? We've done it, haven't we? That looks complete to me. Maybe he's missing one more ear? Yeah, he's missing one more ear. Alright then. Oh, um... Did you ever do that chocolate code puzzle, or do you want me to tell you the answer, or do you want to think on it? So we've got nine mysteries left unsolved here. We'll probably end up solving all of them in one go. It's really annoying. Well, I mean, it's, it's a valid... It's not a scam or anything, it's a valid code, it's just really... <laughs> kind of... Contrived. <laughs> oh, you looked at the answer. Okay. Well, I mean, it's not a scam in the sense it is a code. <laughs> but it is too obscure to be a puzzle in this game. Definitely. <laughs> Man, I... I... I thought it was because the first hint, or well, the the first two hints say something about texting, so I thought it's about phone, like the old style phone, which I have, like like this. So I was messing around with my phone trying to figure out if there's something to do with that. I, uh, they specifically said texting, but but they meant on a keyboard.
And it also it would fail if you had any other keyboard. Yep, that's true. It's not it's not international friendly at all. Yeah. Oh well, there were some other... To, the first few puzzles before you wrote, there were several annoying ones, but I can't remember what they are now. Anyway, I don't want to think about them now. Alright, well... Tomorrow I'll... Oh, I don't think I'll stream anything tomorrow. Probably in a couple of days I'll come back to Ace Attorney. Alright, well, I'll see you later, Koo. Cool.